Welcome back to the channel, everyone. This is probably the most important video I've done in a long time, and it may be one of the last videos I ever do. So listen up. Software is changing. I made this prediction back in 2021 in the very first video I ever did about Palantir. And it's changing in this way in which humans today are traditionally have been at the center of software. Everything we do when we build an application is to design it for human use. But that is changing with AI. AI is pushing humans around the edges of software and pushing itself towards the center. And we don't have to imagine what those systems are gonna look like anymore. We have innumerable examples from both Palantir and Palantir customers that use AI to surface signal data and have it acted upon by humans or automation that affect the real world. We've seen this across industry after industry, BP having one of the most advanced deployments of these types of systems that I've ever seen. But this AI can do things like affect plant production. They can do things like affect windmill production at power, you know, at, at wind farms. This is AI affecting the real world in a virtuous feedback loop with human beings. And that is the future of software. It's surfacing signal data to be acted upon by human beings to affect the real world. And a signal can be anything from the identification of a Russian asset in the war in Ukraine, like warships and tanks or personnel, or it could be predicting the failure of ball bearings and factory equipment or fraudulent transactions. And these systems cannot and will not be contained on a laptop alone. AI must exist as close to the data generation as possible to reduce latency and cost. This is a requirement of the modern OS. And this is what I believe Palantir figured out a long time ago, that Edge AI requires fundamentally a different set of tools. And they realized it years before anyone understood they needed them. And this is evidenced by products like SkyKit that uses Edge AI to perform targeting and intelligence in the harshest conditions on Earth, or products like Meta Constellation that perform those same tasks in the harshest conditions in space, right? And further, Palantir was named the leader in AI ML platforms by Gartner in 2022. This, the evidence is undeniable. Palantir is the most important software company for a future that virtually none of us have grasped until now. Operationalizing data is the backbone of the modern operating system. Proprietary sources of data combined with AI can give you precise answers to high value questions. And these high value questions can include whether or not to take a human life or how to save a human life. These are important questions that, can, that need to be answered. And operational data provides a mental map for human operators working together with AI to understand the predictions being made by AI. What people don't understand about advanced AI, even things like large language models like ChatGPT, is no one knows why the model gave the answer it did. Unless you have a system that can let you audit and infer and understand why that AI made the decision it did. So operational data plays a key component in the modern OS, and it's manifest in Foundry and Gotham. And Foundry provides a complete, fully integrated solution for data versioning, transformation, and the ontological modeling to fuse disparate data silos into meaning. What people fail to realize is organizations are generally made up of hundreds of disparate data silos created by decades of IT, you know, a lot of IT tech debt in a lot of cases. And all of that data is semantically, rep its semantics are different and it's hard to interpret and hard to understand. What does it mean? Without the tools provided in Foundry and Gotham to bring that into an ontological system to fuse the meaning to the data, your data is meaningless. It's worthless and it can't be operational. Foundry also provides the application building tools that remove the engineering bottleneck to flow these data models into AI and ML creation tasks and also human-centric operations tools that combine humans and machines in a symbiotic relationship that will define software for the next decade or more. The rise of large language models like ChatGPT will further accelerate edge AI, this edge AI trend and it will also further accelerate the death of human-centric software. Do you need endless software suites and applications when ChatGPT and technologies like ACT which drive user interfaces and eventually, most likely, API calls 
do you need a human-centric software suite when those technologies can perform any task that a human otherwise would? Is the future of software just a prompt interface where a user can type a question and an AI can give a response and you can see supporting data to understand the trustworthiness of the response and to have the AI take further action? You can do anything with that system. You could book flights, reservations to just about anything. You can search for homes. You can, at, you can search the internet for any question you want answered. The future of software looks nothing like software today. And people are in love with ChatGPT because it's a symbiotic relationship between AI and humans that improve their lives. People though, they're, they're going to want more of that. They're not gonna stop with ChatGPT. But in order to trust black box models like ChatGPT, we must first leverage Palantir's technology to provide the context and hints that ensure a high quality answer is given for every question asked or for every task performed, right? So, and a lot of people don't understand that these black box model, models like, like ChatGPT, they're, they're, they're complex, they're complex systems. You can't, no person can infer or understand exactly why the model gave the answer it did. The only way to try and get quality answers is through experimentation. And it's, and this is sort of now become known as prompt engineering. How do we create prompts, instructions basically, for the AI, the context around the question that ensures the AI gives you a high quality, accurate answer. And using Palantir Foundry, all black box model responses can be collected, rated, and understood. And this allows data scientists using Foundry to select golden prompts used to fine tune models like ChatGPT that are highly specialized versions through a process called fine tuning that will always produce quality answers to high value questions. And further, these operational workflows and resulting models produced in Foundry can be shared with other Palantir customers using Foundry archetypes. This isn't theory either, this is an actual project I'm working on in Foundry right now that uses a, a machine learning technique called SHAP and it produces a virtuous feedback cycle to understand and produce golden prompts and fine-tuned versions of ChatGPT, which can then answer really, 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 in a, in a very, very, very accurate way, really hard questions. And that can include things like code generation and code authoring. So using models to generate code for a data pipeline that you want to produce in Foundry, or it can include instructions on how to learn Foundry. So I hope to have a demo for this of this for you soon, but understand that Palantir Foundry isn't just the, the operational, the, the, the OS that's going to power Edge AI. It's the thing that's going to train AI. <laughs> and that is a truly, truly powerful combination. And it's why I believe in this company and why I'm going to be announcing some very big things very soon, hopefully, that show just how committed and how excited I am about the future of software. And with that, let me leave you with Sham Sankar and his latest speech uh, given at CES 2023 on their partnership with Hyundai Heavy Industries. Thank you. Well, it's great to be here with our partners at HD Hyundai uh, and to see ocean transformation coming to life. You know, at, at Palantir, we aspire to solve the world's hardest problems. We think about it as delivering today the foundational software for tomorrow. Uh, and one of the ways that we really do that is recognizing that you, of course, need the best possible plan, the best possible prediction of what's going to happen in the future, but you have to also understand that not, nothing ever goes according to plan, and that the software that really matters is the software that lets you react to reality. That's what we all experience with the pandemic, with inflation, with the energy crisis, with the wars that are occurring right now. And what I see with OceanWise that, that makes me so excited is all the opportunities, efficiencies, some of which that we just heard about, they're really about empowering your suppliers, suppliers, your customers, customers, and everything in between in that value chain to react better to reality, to find those efficiencies, those opportunities. And our software helps bring that to life by enabling your business to operate like code. Code is so dynamic, it's so agile. You know, you can make changes to it so quickly. Your business should be the same way. Your supply chain should be the same way. Your logistics infrastructure, your maritime infrastructure. 
and you see this promise of your business as code really delivered through the biggest things in the world that we've touched, including some of the items from last year, from unfoiling in the government context the, the, the plot to overthrow the German government uh, to, the, to the conflict that's happening in Europe, or in the commercial context, helping Tyson's Foods save $200 million in logistics costs, or Jacobs save $90 million in, in energy costs for wastewater plants. And our software enables this because it is the ontology that we've created is the, is the operating system for the modern enterprise. It, is, it acts like the nervous system, the cardiovascular system. And it does this by creating a single pane of data that flows into a single pane of glass. You're not just analyzing, you're not just understanding, but you're able to react, you're able to operationalize. It enables you to execute your mission, to run your business and to deliver your software. Foundry allows you to connect and integrate the decision making across your value chain from your suppliers suppliers to your customers customers and this sort of ambition builds on our unique legacy uh, as a company building ecosystems the aviation ecosystem with airbus the insurance ecosystem with swiss re the the drug discovery ecosystem with novartis our partnership with hd hyundai began initially with construction equipment and since then it has expanded to shipbuilding oil refining uh, and so much more and as we look ahead we could not be prouder to collaborate with HD Hyundai on their ocean wise transformation you know they have a half century of deep operational rigor and expertise and that brings a tremendous asset uh, to the significant change and transformation that's possible in this industry Together, as partners, in less than two years, we have integrated 260 source systems, 17,000 data sets, ERP data, CAD data, ship information, design, manufacturing, materials, labor costs, and we've operationalized it into an open and secure platform that's driving real results. Hyundai's vision that the right software, the right technology can meaningfully and sustainably transform this critical industry. That's a vision we share. That's, that's what we're very excited about. We both see a future where intelligent and autonomous processes are fully optimizing not only the marine fleet, ports, but also the activity with end customers. We recognize that the reality today is that there's a complete lack of real-time operational information. We see a future where having that makes what is today simple questions that are impossible to answer something we all take for granted, where this real-time operational information is feeding our ERP systems, our inventory systems, our logistics systems, and our systems are self-healing and reconfiguring and making decisions around this. And Hyundai has already begun this journey. We see that with the integrated smart ship solutions, which are already operational on over 400 ships out in the wild now. And so we're excited to partner with them further on this vision uh, and, and more to come.